Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2, where you join me for part 2 of this week's video down on Norvis, where we're going to take a look at what other people have been up to during the last stream. So I mentioned the uh, the shortages of low density structures in the last uh, in the last video, and that was because up here we didn't have enough plastic coming through to keep this this voracious system up here satisfied. Which is why I've been looking at the alternative recipe for building them. It's just a, a horrendous horrendous recipe. So Mark has done and made a couple of improvements to the system to the plastic system because you see it's being made here and then brought all the way to here, which isn't exactly a long way. But it, the system just isn't capable of producing it or, or transporting it across quickly enough. In order to help speed that up a little bit, Mark has upgraded the uh, the belts here up to from from blue to green ones, so we can now, in theory, load the trains a little bit more quickly. Uh, this one is now actually full. There we go. All these all the way up to here is is now basically is now is mostly full. So we now start we're now able to start stockpiling a little bit of um, plastic in this in this warehouse here. And you'll notice that even though there's four belts feeding in, these two feeding out are capable of taking nearly all of it and that's because yeah the the green belts are 60 per second whereas these are 45 per second so we're we're getting quite a lot of flow into in extra flow into the into the warehouse and that should mean that well this train is set off to come up here that means this train is now set off to come back down again and it's taking a slightly convoluted route because it has to come all the way over to oh good grief over to here before it's able to turn around again but that does mean that in that time we, we, we can give this well, I was going to say we can give this uh, warehouse a bit of a chance to fill up. That's not really happened. Um, another train appeared very, very quickly because presumably there's room for several in the queue here. Um, I'm guessing maybe there's multiple ones of these going to doing doing the run back and forth across here. And so, yeah, we very, very quickly drained all of the all of what, what was loaded into this warehouse, and we're now and that's and that's only sort of a third filled the train. So. Yeah, it's a nice idea, and if we had a bit of a lull in the demand for plastic, then this would mean we'd be able to fill the station up here, and then we'd be able to dump it a bit more quickly into these trains. But with the way the low density structures are going up here, there's there's no chance to get any sort of lulls in the um, in, in in the demand. And you can see, okay, this this one is this is filling up a little bit. If we look in here, we've got nearly three rows, so nearly three thousand uh, plastic in here. But this is, train is very very quickly going to run out, even though we've got uh, one, two, eight green belts dumping plastic into here because we've got one two three four five six seven we've got eight blue belts pulling it back out again so it doesn't have much of a chance it's going to empty again fairly quickly and almost certainly before this train is ready to go so it's working well but not quite well enough i guess is what, is, is what, I, what i'm trying to say here um just because the recipe up here is so ridiculous taking 10 plastic for every single low density structure just means we rip through absolutely phenomenal quantities of it so yes we are going to need a new recipe for making low density structures because this one just isn't keeping up so as part as well as upgrading these belts to green uh, mark says he's done a bit of babysitting of the rocket to try and get get more low density structures up into space because we are getting because we're getting through massive massive quantities of them uh, i mean you'll, you'll notice we're dumping quite a lot in fact the into all of the ones that come, are coming are flowing along the bus at the moment wherever they're here they are are flowing up here and going straight into the rocket so we are filling the rocket up with with lots and lots of low density structures as usual and all of the other stuff that we get through in massive massive quantities so Yes, this is, is working. We are shipping a lot of low density structures and plastic and heat shield tiles and so on up to Norbit, but we're also ripping through them as fast as we're making them. So it, it's something, again, that needs some improvement. Mark has also continued to expand the solar on Norbit. So I assume that's, yes, these sort of fields up here. We've got the massive um, solar arrays up here that's just growing and growing and growing. So every time we bring down some of these solar panels, which have to be built in orbit, down back down to Norbit, we can lay out a bit more of this area. And he's done some landfill along here to square it off. And yeah, we're do we're, we're, we have lots and lots of solar. And as of right now, because it is the middle of the day, we're capable of producing 400 kilowatts times 114,000. Uh, I shall get a number out for that, but it's more certainly more than five gigawatts, and that's enough. That is enough to power the entire factory at least during the day. The problem is sometimes we have nights, and I've, I, I am, as usual, cheating during the during the um, during the video making and having always day turned on just to make make the video look better. But as you can see, when night falls, we have this big spike up to here from the gas power stations trying to cover what can't be covered by the uh, the solar panels. What is quite interesting is that when the when night falls, the the gas power stations are producing more power than the than the solar panels are producing during the day. Um, Although actually looking at this, it's only been relatively recently that we've managed to get enough solar out that we that the power station, the gas power stations are entirely off during the day. So this looks like we have now cracked the problem of enough power from solar specifically during the day, <laughs> which is an important first step. But now we need an extra sort of 
50% on top of that in order to be able to turn uh, boil water and convert it into steam to set up a steam battery um, for, for running during the night. Uh, and when we do that, then we will have enough power available to, to, to start demolishing these free power systems over here, which just rip through enormous quantities of, um, of, of UPS. And that's, I think, part of the reason why the game is running a bit slower than we would ideally like it to. Now you can see, as I was saying, because it's daytime now, all of these are completely idle. They're, they're, they aren't needed because we've got to be, now have enough solar for during the day. We just need a bit more for, uh, for to, to tide us over during the night, and then a bit more beyond that to future-proof the system a bit. But we are going; things are going in the right direction. We have a healthy amount of solar now, and it's only taken up this much space. My goodness, that's a lot of solar. <laughs> so yes. Plans are going according to plan. We have 40, we do have 14,000 solar panels in order to get to this point, and we want, and we're now going to want to take it up to at least 20 before we uh, can call it good. Still down on Norvis, Tristan's been messing around with the trains because, as you saw in the in the videos last week, we had some we had some fuel crises, uh, and that was I think we think that was down to um, or at least I think, and somebody else probably knows that that was down to trying to switch over from using um, using processed fuel over to using um, rocket fuel. How then we then decided actually there's no no point in using the rocket fuel because I, be I believe and I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong but I believe you get the same speed and power bonuses out of using rocket fuel as you do out of process fuel they're both plus 150 percent or plus 50 percent or something whatever it is I, I think you get the same bonus anyway um, but if you run the rocket fuel through the fuel processors you can get enormous quantities more out of well you can get a bit more out of it um, and therefore running the trains off processed fuel but making that from rocket fuel because we don't have enough coal or wood to use those as a, as a base um, is a much better idea. So yeah, we as, as you've seen in previous videos, we are a bit we're struggling a little bit for coal because we're making so much plastic um, and, and, and coal is required for plastic which is required for the low density structures as we saw. So we've switched we've actually switched over to rocket fuel which is made from oil and this is actually easier for uh, and something we have a better supply of which seems crazy but there you go. Uh, we also have an emergency uh, wood feed, which we can use. Is that a higher priority? Oh, no, that's the higher priority, by the looks of it. Um, yeah, so we'll use the wood first, because that is basically free, and, it's, and this is an overflow. Uh, but um, we may want to reduce the wood usage at some point in the future because I strongly suspect that wood is going to be, be is going to be harming the UPS a little bit although that said there aren't that many um, greenhouses down here and they're just fed water so they're probably okay really uh, we'll just keep this, this stream of wood feeding the uh, feed, feeding the, um, the the processed fuel as, as the priority so that, that, that should work quite nicely Tristan has also made uranium fuel cells on the bus somewhere um, I, I spotted them oh, here they are these are being put into a red chest so they can be brought over to the rocket and shipped up to uh, Norvis, Norbit, um, because there are some of the more advanced uh, science types require uh, require you to use uranium uh, uranium fuel cells to make them. So we're going to we need those. They are being transported by bot, which is a little bit gross, but it's, it's, it's got a little bit crowded around here. We'll hopefully get a bit of a redesign once we switch over to the space elevators and then be able to have the, everything delivered in a, in, in a nicer belt-based way. Or train-based way. I'm, I'm not. I don't have a problem with trains. I mentioned yesterday that we are having a problems with the hydrogen chloride coming out of out of here, and it turns out the reason it was less of a problem than I thought is because Tristan had actually been in and fixed and improved it, and that's why we've now got the machines along here that are taking taking a full belt's worth of sand, or capable of taking a full belt's worth of sand, and probably also why we have some hydrogen chloride in these pipes, and it's now the the, uh, the raw rare metal that is the limiting factor over here. Um, so yes, he's improved that a bit. Uh, it's going to need further improvement once we increase the f the uh, production rate of, of the raw rare metals. But for now, that seems to be the, uh, the, the the rare metals are the limiting factor. And now I think I shall take us back up to Norbit. And if we look over here, let's see. So one of the things I did in the in the last stream, you, you'll have mentioned, remember, you'll remember that I um, increased the uh, throughput of the of the uh, blank data cards down here before by putting in far more of these, and that massively overstressed the uh, the co contaminated cosmic water processing. So I increased that a bit, and that probably was okay, but these pipes were still quite full. So I thought, right, let's let's just make sure. So I've put in another two machines over here. These are quite straightforward. I, I had to put in a bit of an underground pipe here in order to get in order to get this underground pipe into place. Uh, so there's a there's a little bit of a gap here, but you know it's an underground pipe, but that's fine. And that's enabled me to get the uh, get these extra two machines in. They they fitted in quite nicely. There was no, no no significant difficulties here, and we now have more processing for the contaminated cosmic water than we need. So these pipes are basically empty. So that's 
great. That's what we like to see. The contaminated cosmic water processing is working very nicely. We do still have a shortage of data cards down here though. Despite the despite the doubling of production, we are still using them up as fast as they're coming in. Although that said, we do actually have, we have a train sat here now that is full and hasn't been hasn't been requested anywhere. And there's practically a train's load in here. So maybe actually maybe we're now okay. One of the reasons we've been having so much of a problem is, and this is this is very much my fault, is that over here. I um, I, I, I've been stockpiling rather a lot of the Astro One catalogs because I, I decided I, I decided to stop this filling up when it got to 3,000 instead of 1,000, which would have been a sensible number. So we've got a lot of Astro One catalogs in here, and that means a lot of data cards tied up in there because it takes four data cards to make each one, I think, and you get some of them back when you use them. So there's a massive backlog in here, a massive stockpile in here, and then once, but once we bring them up here and we use them for for insights and significant data and you know astro science because that's what we, yeah, then the main the main reason for them. Once we've used up a load of them, we'll we'll pour some back onto the onto the into the bus again, and hopefully that will help quite a lot. But we shall see how that goes in the in the long run. I mean, we do have quite a lot doing things like just hanging out on belts here, which is there's quite a lot here, but. There's not a lot you can do about that unless you go out unless you go box for absolutely everything, and we're not going to do that for all of all of the reasons that I've mentioned in the past. <laughs> I also, speaking of bad ideas, had this what seemed like a great idea of putting in a green chest down here. And this is this is a, this is a buffer chest, so you can program one of these with various requests and to ask it to bring in certain things. So I programmed it, and I've removed the programming now because it was a bad idea. But I programmed it up to bring in some scaffold and some belts and some and some splitters and some underground belts, with the idea being the uh, the bots could bring them over to here. And then they get you. And then when I when I asked for a large chunk of stuff to be built down here, so for example, if I say I want to put in a load of um, space scaffolding like that, then the bots can take it from here and build it and build it over here, rather than having to fly it all the way over. I don't know where all the bots are. They're, they're obviously been stolen by somebody else doing some building. But the bots can pick the stuff up from here and build it out much much more quickly, rather than having to fly from all the way over here with the with the, with the goods. So you can see here that here they are. They're coming in from wherever. They can grab the scaffolding from here, bring it over, and lay it down. So in theory, this should make things much, much quicker. The problem is, because we have this one RoboPort network to rule them all and in the UPS bind them, we have a problem that if you then try to build some over here, bots will prioritize taking from a buffer chest rather than a much nearer um, red chest. So when Mike is building up here, the bots will grab it from down here. When the, If I'm building over here or Mark's building up here, they'll fly all the way down here to grab them and fly all the way back again. Now, in theory, we could get around that by having these green chests in every every area. But again, you'd still, when you ran out of stuff in your area, you'd then have that problem again. So it's not really, it's not particularly practical. It's not, it's not working the way I wanted it to. The other problem with it is, is that means work for the logistics bots. And, that, and so the logistics bots are trying to keep that chest full by flying stuff from over here down to here to keep to keep the green chest at what it was requesting and the problem with flying uh, logistics bots around is they are the ones that crash i don't think construction bots crash um from flying arrays it's just the logistic bots that are, uh, are vulnerable and so that means you're going to get through lots and lots of bots just carrying stuff around here and it, it what we should actually be doing <clears throat> is splitting off all of these roboport networks from each other and having them separate and then having maybe a train coming out bringing out all of those supplies uh, things like the, the the basic things that everywhere needs like pipes and scaffolding and and um, belts and things like that all of that could be brought out by train and then these buildings well the problem is <laughs> yeah you, you either you either link your entire all your roboport areas together like this in which case you take a massive UPS hit and it takes three days for the bots to fly from wherever to wherever or alternatively you fly back and forth filling up your inventory with the stuff you need and fly out and drop it down over here so I'd, I'd be out here all of the basic stuff would be built from that train but I go okay now I need some research servers I need some astrometric facilities laser facilities what, whatever and I'd have to go over and pick those up by hand and bring them over here and that's basically how I played in my last run, but I did spend quite a lot of time flying back and forth across the base. Now I didn't have the um, the train system to bring over the, the 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 scaffolding and stuff at that point. So maybe with the if we put in a train to bring over construction stuff and then just rely on the weird buildings and things being brought over by hand, maybe that would be better. I I don't know, but as as it is. Mike in particular has been commenting, and I say Mike in particular not because he complains a lot, but because he's building the furthest away from from the bus area. And you can see these are these are these are these white blobs are uh, logistics bots flying stuff over to his green chest that's presumably up here somewhere. I, I I don't know exactly where it is, but he's presumably done the same thing. 
Either that or it's because he's requesting stuff to a green chest like this. But you can see all these red dots here, and these are where robots, these are where logistics bots have crashed. And because that's outside the Roboport network, the wreckage hasn't been picked, hasn't been tidied up. So that we'd have the wreckage of bots with random bits of belt and motors and engines and so on, just scattered around the uh, scattered around in the in the uh, cold depths of space. So, yeah, this isn't a great system. I want to get away from um, from using logistics bots like this, especially especially as you see they're, they're they're all flying. Yeah, they're flying green circuits and engines over. Them. That's that's bad, bad Mike. Don't do that. Um, it's just yeah, it's it's causing problems. When instead we should just have a train coming over bringing construction material, and to be honest, trains bringing coming over bringing the thing the things that he needs for his making his uh, locomotives. Now. In the future, hopefully, once we've got the space elevator up and running, we'll get completely get rid of um, a lot of these things. We'll build them on Norvis. We'll bring them up in in multi thing trains, um, a space multi item, multi resource space trains, and that will solve a lot of the problems up here. But for the time being, I guess I'll, I'll turn a blind eye to it for now. But still, it is a bit horrible. And if we look at the logistics bot losses over the last 10 hours, we can see there's a spike there. I don't know what caused that. But then once we started playing around with these things, there's been a massive increase in the number of bots we've lost. Now, granted, it's only 474. That's not many and it's not really that serious. But it's sort of, I don't know, it's the... It's the principle of the matter, I think, is the main thing. And yeah, we've, we've lost a thousand bots over the whole play session. That's not an enormous number, but I still, I, I still don't like it. Tristan has done some boosting of resources up here, so we've got additional ion stream being made. Even more, even more of these machines, presumably. Um, blimey, lots, lots and lots of those. M more excitingly, he's put in a second science lab up here because we reckon that we are now producing at least some of the science packs in sufficient numbers that we can support two labs out here. So uh, somebody, I think it was Mike, also spent a little bit of time making uh, some more of the uh, tier four. Um, productivity modules to shove in the second lab. Now we're probably never going to need more than two of these because as we get as the game as we get faster and faster, as we get better and better at research, we're going to get better and better speed modules, better and better productivity modules. This is not going. The, the, these two labs are probably going to be more than sufficient. I think in my last game, I found the one was plenty by the end of the game. <laughs> um, but still, having a second one in, in here was worthwhile. At least. Well, we are now currently just waiting for um, tier two uh, material science to come through. But in, in theory, when when we when we're researching something like I don't know, let's let, let's look into um, Astro, Astro Catalog three, just because that's something I know we can do. You see, they, we kick both of these kick in, and the science will happen relatively relatively quickly. Um, that's going up at a decent speed, and it's probably as fast as we're capable of producing the science packs and the new types of science packs out as well. So we haven't we haven't had any serious problems. He's also started making supercomputer twos, which is going to be exciting. If you can get those properly automated, uh, here, here we go. In here, I hit, hit, spotted this yesterday and went, "Oh, there's a thing. I'll talk about it tomorrow." So yes, he's making the supercomputer twos here. Um, problem is, they require the quantum processors, and those are being made in a funny place over da down on um, en with energy science, I think. Yes, here we go. Down here at the bottom of the energy science, we've got a machine making the quantum computers, and those are made out of. Um, this general g generic holmium stuff mostly and some circuits and some imicite as well apparently um but most specifically the quantum phenomena phenomenon data which is why they're being made here because this is where we have a supply of those data cards in theory i'm not quite sure where he's getting them from um but in th theory there is a supply of these data cards and then he's dropping them into a red chest which is a little bit weird but sure uh, and eventually they'll be put into a station over here in a train to take them over to where they're needed uh it looks like he's not actually feeding the quantum phenomenon data down. Oh, actually, no, that's blue blue circuits on this on this belt. Yeah, maybe he's not feeding the maybe he's hand feeding the quantum phenomenon on data because he's definitely hand feeding the quantum processors up here into the machines making into the machines making the tier two supercomputers. So that's going to need to be improved at some point in the future, but not not just yet. Maybe that'll be what this belt is for that comes all the way down to here. So if we look over here. Yes, there we go. Quantum quantum supercomputer. So at some point, he's going to bring these up here by train, put them onto the bus here, and pass them up, and make, we can make start making tier two supercomputers in in larger numbers. So that's that's good. This will allow us to do some of the sciencey bits and pieces of it a little bit faster, and also allow us to do some of the more advanced ones as well, because you can't do everything with the tier ones. He's also uh, speaking of upgrades. Gone over in the in the science area. We now have one of the computers. This one apparently. Uh, here we go. This is why he wanted a tier two quantum supercomputer. Um, uh, quantum supercomputer, sorry, the tier two supercomputer, uh, and that that's because now, as I was saying, it allows you to do some more advanced stuff. Here he is making the significant data from all four colours of insights. Now we have all four of them available in decent in decent quantities, um, and these are marked for upgrade at some point when we actually have the have the computers for it. 
And that means, again, whereas with this one, we may, we're able to produce uh, eight significant data from 36 uh, insights. Here, we're able to produce 10 significant data from 36 insights. So again, it's, it's another boost to the efficiency of, the, of how, how well how the system works, in order, allowing us to get that little extra bit of uh, significant data out of our out of our insights. And that's very valuable because these things are expensive, and we get through a lot of significant data. As you can see, there's not all that much of it on the uh, on, on the belt at the moment. We seem to be getting ripping through it at a bit of a rate. And I think that's because these three computers have been are, are stopped. Oh no. No, no, they are still running. They're just very, very slow. So we've also put speed modules in this one to get that to go a bit quicker as well. So, yeah, we might need to speed this up a bit in the next uh, in, in the next session, or perhaps just upgrade some more of the computers first. Either way, we don't have enough significant data, so that needs a boost. He's also tidied up the uh, some some um, nonsense that Mike was uh, Mike had leaked some iridium plates and some iridium girders onto the disposal system, and that had come down here, right all the way down to the bottom, where it had sat here on the end of the bus, set off the alarms, and so Tristan went in and tidied it up after Mike. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Mark has been working on biologicals, so yes, we we, we know he's been he's been doing this for a couple of sessions now. Now we've got this massive t tower of ooh, biological stuff going all the way up to here. Uh, let's have a look at what's going on here. So, right, uh, we talked last time we touched on what was going on up here. So this, this is the system that turns bio goo into nutri nutritional goo into bio samples, and then turns the samples back into goo again. So it goes round and round and round, but you get more and more samples as you as you go on. So over here we've got a we've got a system where he's feeding. Um, bio samples down here to be as a priority down here to be turned back into more goo because you need to keep that closed loop running uh, in order to get more out if, if you sent it all out to go and be science and ran out down here then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be able to keep itself sustained so the first priority is to ship it down this way he's also got interestingly his disposal belt which is bringing out junk data cards is also bringing out um, bio samples as well in order to take them down to be to be regrouped and re, 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 recycled and that one is where is it here it was and that's the priority on the input I think he might need a belt side balancer on here to um, to ensure that the we, we always use the uh, the stuff whatever's coming down here and also because this has clearly clogged up because we're not getting through these enough uh, so no there isn't room to stick one in here unfortunately so yeah that's going to need need a little bit of a tweak but the basic system seems to be working so then up here what do we have well we've got the genetics data being geneticized that's that's where we take in some lithium chloride apparently okay um, and data cards and bio sludge and it produces genetic data and and, and, and junk liquids okay fine then we're uh, this is the usual so similar to the material science where we're taking in uh, in this case we're taking in um, biomass and then dissolving it in chemical gel probably and that produces some biochemical data telling us how it dissolved so that's useful and lots of contaminated goopers as well that we, that we can then recycle uh, it also takes in some spice as well which is a, a, a thing that can be brought over by delivery cannon though so that's fine then up here, similarly, we are. What are we doing here? We're biomechanical data, so we're presumably we're squashing or stretching or crushing the uh, the biomasses. With, uh, we've got some lubricant in there, so it all slides nicely. That produces data, and again turns the biomass into back into goop that we can uh, recycle. Then we're setting fire to it here with plasma stream. Lovely. Again, more data. Feeding all of that, all, and then we're feeding all of those. Uh, except that we seem to run out of combustion data because we've run out of. I don't know why we've run out. Oh, we've run out of combustion data because these junk, junk data cards are backed all the way up. Right, that's why. Because a lot of these, you look in here, you see it's only got a 75% chance of actually producing the data. Um, half, a quarter of the time it produces, it fails in one way or another, and 24% of that time it produces a junk data card. The other time the data card, I don't know, gets burned, in, burned into nothingness by the plasma, I suppose. And I'm guessing the other ones have similar probabilities down here. And no, no, that these are... The, these ones all always always succeed, so that's, that's that's nice. But it's just this one up here, the fiery one, where sometimes you accidentally burn the data card and have to send it back to for uh, for reformatting. So yeah, the disposal belt here is a nice idea, but we're not getting through the uh, bio samples quickly enough to keep the uh, to, to to allow it to flow. Now, if we do, is there anything I can do here to to help with this? Not really. Uh, we'll just have to leave it, leave leave it. Actually, I can put a little bit more belt on up here, and that'll fix that problem. And then, we'll, then, that, then that'll suddenly flow, and we'll be able to produce sciences again. So that's going to produce all of the bio uh, catalog ones that we could need. They're going to get dumped out onto the belt along here, poured out, and presumably brought down to a, tr a train down here. There we go. Yes, there's a train with the standard um, setup on it. Right now, we've put in that, that belt. You can see this is this is been allowed to flow a bit. Where where is it? This has been allowed to flow a bit. We've got some of those bio samples out, and got rid of a load of those junk data cards down there so again this is this is basically okay 
Uh, it's flowed for a little while, but presumably, yes, you can see it's, it's this side of the belt that's flowing, not this side. And so that means these aren't actually getting recycled. We need we need a, we need belt side balancing in here in order to in order to sort that. But as I said, there isn't room to fit that in um, in, in here, so we we we, we can't, which is a shame. Um, but we will. Uh, uh, Mark will have to do something about that in the, in the next stream. Uh, so yes, that's now running again. We're able to produce the fire data. That's been brought up here. That's that's backed up very very quickly. We've got these are producing. Well, these are all producing the data much faster than it's required. But you know, there's there's no harm in that. Better too quick than too slow. Uh, then up here, it looks like Mark has made a good start on at, on bio two. So he's producing what's this advanced genetic data, I guess, um, in order to, and and oh, he's in the advanced um, bioculture and advanced bio samples. And then uh, and then he started to get more work on. Uh, squishy, another squishy data with the experimental biomass, and another Bernie data with the experiment with this insectant here biomass, and then what's this one? This is biochem, and then again same sort of thing with the biochem. So again, it's exactly the same, but this time he's using the purple biosamples, which are made by this machine from uh, normal biosamples and no way, that's making oh oh this is another one of the the circular things. So look up sample. Okay, so we make so, so yes, here we go. We make so you need the the, the tier two experimental genetic data, which is made from two of the earlier science pack, science cards, uh, and nutrient vat, and, and vitamin and extract, which is awkward because we can't transport this yet, because it doesn't go in delivery cannons. Uh, Mark has brought a rocket's worth of it over, and I think we're hand-feeding it at the moment, but we'll get we'll get the trains, and the, we'll get the space trains and spaceships and things up and running sooner or later. And that allows us to have um, the experimental bioculture, which you can then turn with the nutrient gel into the experimental biomasses, and also some normal biomasses, so there's a by byproduct there. So that might be why there's quite so much on uh, of, of the uh, bio masses on here so this is going to need as I say needs the, needs the bell balancing and then it'll, then it'll probably all be fine and then up here squish burn melt and probably the geneticize so now it looks like actually Mark has progressed really really quickly he's practically there with bioscience 2 catalogs so we'll only need to copy these up and turn them and, and uh, program them for the tier 2 catalogs and we're going to have that as well wow that's 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 an impressive leap forward and that'll be really nice because once we've got all the biologicals we can start looking into things like the better um the better productivity modules like this one um what's that waiting for i was waiting for bio scrubbers all right there's a couple of other things to do but basically we can start doing the better productivity modules and that'll allow us to do have even better boosts on all of the all of the things we're trying to make the only problem with that is these are going to be astonishingly expensive um, to make they're going to require catalogs and scrubbers and yeah it, you, you see what i'm getting at here Ah, Mark says he's not finished um, biological, but the biological two science because he needs vitalic acid, um, and that's he's going to be setting that up on Norvis next stream because it's going to be a fairly big thing, and it's something we want to do on planet side because that way we can use productivity modules, get more of it out because yeah, it's going, it's going to require a lot of throughput. Now, what we might do here, so oh, there, look, there's another, there's another green chest that's causing um, bot deaths. <laughs> What we might end up doing, and I suspect, my, um, which is what I did last time, I got all the levels of Vita processing done out on my Vita Melange planet, and then ship because it, it's quite, it's quite a, it requires quite a lot of the earlier step, earlier levels to make the later levels. In fact, let's have a look at that. So Vita Melange spice, it takes 30 of those. No, actually, no, it only takes 10 because you get 20 of them back. But it takes 10 to make about five, just over five. So it's about two to one ish then the vitalic ex vitamin lounge extract actually that's one to two vitalic acid but vitalic acid is a liquid so actually one extract to two vitalic acid is probably quite bad because you can see here when you want to make a bio scrubber that takes another 30 vitalic acid so it's 15 vitamin lounge extracts to one bio scrubber so i think making the bio scrubbers on out on the other planet is going to be quite a good idea and then beyond that you get onto more and more advanced things which we're not really going to talk about yet because we haven't quite got in fact actually no bio scrubber is the last thing in the bio tree so yes we're, going, we're probably going to want to make the bio scrubbers out on bridget because that's where because we this is a planet so we can use the productivity modules but also it's where the vitamin melange is being made and therefore we're not doing we're not transporting too much of the earlier steps so it's, it's the logistical efficiencies that i've talked about before even when you've got a, a, a spaceship that has an entire warehouse's worth of stuff in it. You still don't want to be transporting. You still, you, if you can, if you can send one spaceship instead of fifteen, you might as well. Next up, we get on to uh, what Mike has been doing, and over here, he has been uh, continuing with the um, continuing with materials uh, sciences. Specifically, he's been sort of building out blindly because he knows that he's going to want to make um, material science catalog three up here, but 
we haven't actually researched those yet. So he's been just been putting the machines in and using FNEI to work out what's needed, which is a little bit odd. I think the main the main reason is because we wanted to use all, our, our top priority at the moment is to get the space elevators up and running. Uh, space elevator, that's this one. Yes. And so we're trying to, uh, this is our absolute top priority. So all of our material science packs twos are going towards making the space elevator. That is, that is the thing that we really, really want at the moment. Um, and so that means we haven't had any of those material science pack twos spare in order to research in order to research making material science pack three which is this one or catalog three and then the science pack down here three so he's been but he's been you've been able to use fnei to work out what's required for it so it's not it's not it's not too bad it's not too painful yeah there's been a little bit of squabbling about that um, um mark apparently moved uh moved this one where is it to the more or less the front of the queue, although no research has been done on it, so we haven't actually wasted any any uh, research pack. So that's that's a good thing. And then he noticed that somebody moved it back to the back of the queue again because yes, space elevators. So I think I'll probably talk about this more in the next video when he's actually got it all up and running because I mean he's put in a lot of work as you can see here, but there's nothing re you can't see any of it running just yet. Even though he's got he's got all of the inputs, so he's got the girders here, he's got the ir iridium plates, he's got he hasn't, hasn't got memory cards, but oh yes, he has it up here and he's got explosives. That's exciting. Um, and down here he's got uranium and so he's, so he's got all of the stuff being fed in here uh, apart from material science testing packs of course um, but the systems aren't able to actually kick in yet because we're waiting for the uh, more important things to be done first and as ever the uh, the problem with this is the material science testing packs which are being made all the way down here which are presumably oh no we've got plenty of Huh. So we've got plenty of imosite now. It's, I guess, bet it's the rare metals, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's the rare metals that we've now run out of. So the shortage that we're having of rare metals is now is now causing there to be a massive shortage of material testing packs, which means Mike is uh, now unable to produce everything that he wants to. So yeah, <laughs> it's it, it, it's problematic. We've got we've got. Um, We've just got shortages of it. Every time, every time we fix one shortage to get the material testing packs up and running, we find there's actually now a shortage of something else. So, um, yeah, un unlucky, Mike. But we'll get we'll get all this up and running soon. I'm sure. Uh, we just need to we just need to sort out that 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 rare metals and yeah, and, and the stone and the everything else I was talking about yesterday. Yeesh. <laughs> So that's uh, that. That brings you up to date with uh, Norvis Orbit. Let's have a quick look around some of the other planets because there's, there's not been an enormous amount done out on these. But I did mention last week this this area had jammed up. There was there was a blockage of um, core fragments of stone coming around here. So I went out and had a look at it, and I honestly don't know what was causing the problem because I didn't do anything, and now it's working absolutely fine. We have we have we have the uh, the core core processing running here we have the core uh, the the vulcanite ore that's coming in from core processing coming along here and being made into the vulcanite so and we have loads and loads of vulcanite in the warehouse over here so i honestly i don't know what went wrong there i don't know how we managed to apparently run out of, apparently jam the system up but when i went and looked at it it had magically fixed itself um i do wonder if it was due to the um glass that we're shipping to Nor uh, Norvis, whether it was due to that clogging up, and so last week when we, when we unclogged it there, that meant there was then a bit of a load on the stone again from here, and so we were able to slowly trickle through it, and by the time I went out and looked at it, it had just caught up. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but for some reason or another, the problem was fixed, and we it, it's now working happily. Out on Snowdrop, Tristan has started building a nuclear power plant. Let's have a look for that. Here it is over here. It's one of those long, really ridiculously long linear designs that uh, that Mark put together, where you uh, you feed a load of water in up top here into from a load of pumps that don't have power. Great. Um, oh, oh, these are the pumps, not the offshore pumps, right? So we need to, we need something to bootstrap the power, probably a solar panel or two. We need some offshore pumps around here to get it all into the into the duct intake, and then you can flow it flow it down here through the ducts. Uh, that's ducts with a T. <coughs> Uh, all the way down here, and then in, in the tanks. You, you've, see, you've seen this nuclear plant before. There's, there's an identical one of these out on Agnea because that's a waterless planet. So we didn't want to, I didn't want to use the free power. And Tristan is using this one rather than the free power system because we reckon this is going to be far more UPS friendly. Eventually, he'll be producing enormous quantities of um, cryonite from this planet. But you know, having power is an important first step. Uh, what's this ridiculously long belt? Oh, this is going to be taking the fuel cells over to the uh, nuclear power plant. Fine. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. When I released the last video, or possibly Possibly in the last stream, I had a re request from someone in the comments asking me to cover what research we'd done in the in the in the last session. So uh, today I'm I'm going to do that for the first time. So we have researched, and then this actually this is going to be really useful because it'll tell me what extra stuff we've got and therefore what I should be thinking about upgrading to. So we've got advanced furnaces. So these are um, 
basically they are a they are a furnace, but they're made out of significantly more exotic uh, materials like energy control units, immersion beams, and so on. Uh, presumably they're much better. I'll have a look in a second. Uh, a crafting speed of eight. That sounds pretty good. Uh, but I imagine they probably use more power. They're more expensive to make, and so on. We researched heavy bearings. Those are an intermediate step. They are a thing you will use for a lot of the more advanced infrastructure. And I imagine that Mike is going to be using a lot of these in his research later as well. Now that we've got bio biological sciences, we've been able to um, do intelligence, the Intelligence 1 upgrade. And that increases lab productivity uh, by 5%. So in, in other words, we need 5% less, you know, for, with rounding errors because of maths. Um, we need 5% less, fewer... Um, research packs in order to make each each, each individual science uh, science discovery so that's really good and this is the other really good reason for making for doing biological sciences the, you get all of these sort of upgrades and you get the productivity packs as well and you get you get you get some other nice stuff from bio as well but those those are the two things that really stick out to me right now uh, we've done biological catalog 2 and that allows us to then go on and start making biological science 2 um, but we're not doing the science 2 research until we're actually until we've got all this ready because it because uh well if doing too many doing too many researches clogs up the available science in here and makes you think you can do things when you can't so we're going to leave that for a little bit longer we've done all the available simulations so that'll be the bio biomechanical simulation and then the uh xeno progression simulation and the uh nanite simulation and, and if allowing us to then do the universal simulation and these are the, these these give us the recipes that allow us to get the higher productivity from turning insights into significant data so that again is very valuable for efficiency reasons and allows us to do as i was talking about earlier this universal simulation recipe to get the uh, to get 10 from our 36 instead of only eight space elevators are in progress as i've been talking about that's going to be very very useful we'll hopefully see those in the next session bio scrubbers have been added to the queue because you know it's a bio thing that we can do relatively easily and material catalogs threes are in the queue because um Mike would like those in order to be able to, you know, stop building blindly. So uh, once we've got the once we've got the elevators, once we've got the space elevator finished, we can then pick off the uh, the next the next two catalogs for the um, uh, sorry the bio scrubbers and the uh, and the material catalogs to allow um, Mark and Mike to get on with their sciences their, their sciences a bit more effectively. Finally, we're going to have a quick look at the death counter. Now, everyone's been doing pretty well here, mostly because we've all been hiding up in space. And despite what you'd expect, space is actually a relatively safe place to be. We have a nice healthy supply of the um, of the, the life support canisters coming up, so nobody is suffocated. Everything is going pretty well up there. Yeah, it's just going it's it's going well. We're uh, we're all we're all surviving quite nicely. No no deaths at all to talk about. So that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll, uh, check, we'll check out the stream on Monday. We'll have also a Factorio video coming out on Tuesday. Uh, what that video is will depend on whether you're a supporter or not. Channel supporters get access to all of my videos a week early. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you have made a donation on Ko-Fi, PayPal or uh, you're a, a, a Twitch subscriber or a YouTube member and you don't have that access, uh, come along, join the Discord. Make sure you've got your um, appropriate accounts linked together and you'll get, you'll get the access that way. I shall be back on Wednesday for a mystery um, stream, and I say mystery because I haven't actually decided what I'm going to be streaming yet, because I finished um, XCOM last week. Uh, so, yes, there'll be something there. Maybe it'll be Darkest Dungeon, maybe it'll be Kerbal Space Program. There'll be something anyway, and I'll be putting up a poll to, or to, to uh, allow people to, to offer their opinions on what I should be streaming. And, of course, I'll be back next Friday and Saturday with some more update videos from the next, um, fr fr from the next stream. So, thank you very much once again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.